Hi and welcome to this month's Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dave Hittiman, the Applications Specialist for the Steel segment here at Trimble. And today we're going to be continuing our discussion about custom components. Uh, this month talking about uh, creating some basic formulas in your custom component variables. So if you go back and watch those previous videos, um, we've talked about how we can create custom components. We talked about how we can create bindings um, that control the size and shape of some of this material. Uh, those bindings get added to my variables list. I have a few more in here than the previous video because I did add this top plate. Um, but in the past, in the previous video, um, what we did was we showed how you can control now these individual bindings by simply changing one of these dimensions. So if I go ahead and change this dimension to 6, you can see how that plate gets wider uh, down at that bottom corner. But, you know, that's not really preferable. You don't want to have to control each handle of that plate. Um, what we want to do is kind of teach this that when I change one value, there's other values that I want to follow along. And we can do that by simply changing the formula field for one of those bindings to say equals, and that's kind of activating the formula function. And I can say I want this to equal maybe some type of mathematical formula, I want this to follow the property of another object, or I can tell it to simply follow the property of another variable. So if I come in here and I say equals d6, what I can do now is change d6, and we can see how both values update automatically because now they're linked together, um, saying that this one should equal the next. So that's a, that's a very simple formula to, to create, but as you can imagine, that's extremely powerful to be able to control things in a much more user-friendly fashion. Of course, if I have a variable that I'm no longer controlling directly, I probably want to come over here and I want to set that variable to hide in the dialog box. And then in the variable that I am controlling, I probably want to change its text. We'll maybe call this something like plate width. And that way, when I close and save out of this component, now when I double click on this, I'm going to have a plate width field. And if I change this and update the component, we can see that the whole plate gets wider. Um, so that simply, you can make very intelligent, very powerful components where you can control in a, in a user-friendly way the size and shape of material. Now, if we wanted to do something a little bit more complex than that, let's say we wanted the variable to follow something that wasn't a binding. Maybe we wanted to follow one of these object properties. Um, all of the objects that make up this component are listed in this custom component browser. You have your main part, or primary part, you have your secondary part, and if you were to expand these, you can get information about these parts, like the profile, material grade, class, and so on. Um, also, there's going to be the same listing for your component objects, or things that are created by the custom component. And if I can expand this, you can see we've got contour plates, a fitting cut, different bolt groups being created, and again, you can see, access, and even change the information here for component objects or objects created when you insert this component into the model. So as an example of this, let's say that I wanted this top plate to always match the flange thickness of this beam. First thing I need to do is I need to teach this component how to go find the flange thickness of that beam. So if I select the, the beam here in the, uh, the 3D view, I can see that the secondary parts are highlighted. If I expand these properties, you can see there's a profile properties uh, section and a flange thickness. So if I right click on this, there's the option to copy the value, the current value of this beam, whether it's you know half inch or 7 16 or something like that, or I can copy the reference so that it will always get the size of the, the, whatever the beam happens to be. So if we're using different size beams in the model, it will automatically read that flange thickness. So the value is going to be more of a current fixed number. Reference is going to say, I don't care what beam it is. I don't care how it changes. I always want to get its value. So we're going to copy the reference and then go back to my variables list. And I could simply plug something like this into a direct uh, distance variable. Um, in this case, though, I'm going to go ahead and add a new parameter type variable, which is not really tied to anything yet. And I'm going to set this up so that I want this to equal whatever I just copied from the custom component browser. So I'm going to right click here and say paste. And now you can see it's getting the uh, property of a profile. It's getting the flange thickness one, and then it's getting the GUID 
So it's kind of identifying which beam it's trying to get the flange thickness from. And when I hit enter, you can see how that value then updates automatically in my variables list. So if I were to change this beam size for some reason, let's say I want to change this to a, uh, a slightly thicker flanged beam, so here's a 5 8 flange. As soon as I come down here and hit modify and update that member size, you can see how the flange thickness automatically, because it's reading the reference, it read from that member, pulled that information into this, and now filled out that I want a 5 8 inch uh, thickness being referenced. So we can then take that value and we can actually drive it to different model objects. Now I could come up here to my custom component browser and I can go under the general properties here and directly drive, you know, kind of copy paste that same formula up there. I prefer not to do that. I like to actually spell things out here um, before I paste them into my browser. Um, that way I can actually see the results a little bit better, but that is just, that's entirely personal preference. Um, but what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and I'm going to add a new parameter. Now, the size of this plate is driven by the profile properties, and the profile properties are currently plate 3 eighths. So I need to recreate that, uh, that nomenclature, that text, um, so that I can drive the plate thickness properly. Now, I can do that in this formula by changing the type, the value type, from a length to a profile type. And as you can see, there's a really long list of different types of uh, properties that we can control. So when you're controlling bolts or welds or chamfers or anything like that, um, you got a lot of options in here. So I'm going to choose profile and then I'm going to build, so to speak, the profile uh, name, which is going to be equals, again, I'm setting up a formula here. First, I need to start with the letters PL and because I'm using text, I'm going to put them in a set of quotes. And then I'm going to say PL plus whatever value P1 happens to be. And if I do that, you can see how now it's built the text that I need to push into the profile field of that plate. So now I can come up here to my component browser for that plate. And again, if you're not sure which object it is, like let's say this is all collapsed, you can go ahead and click on the object here and it will highlight that line or you can click on the line or the object uh, row here and it's going to light it up in the model. But I'll expand this out, go to my general properties, find profile, and then if we click again we'll get the ability to edit this field. I can add an equal sign here and then call out P2. Now I could have built the same type of formula down here where I put the quotes plus P1 and put that up there. That's totally fine. I don't even need to call in P1. I could say that this equals quotes PL plus and then paste this same flange thickness call off um, to build it that way. Again, personal preference, I like to see what I'm about to do here. I find it a little bit easier to play with it in the variables list if I'm testing something uh, before I push that up to the browser. But once I hit enter, now it's going to be always reading P2 which is referencing the beam flange here and you can see that that plate went and updated. So if we go ahead and change this beam size again, let's say we change this back down to a 16 by 40 which only has a half inch flange. When I hit modify, and I'm going to ask you to look at a couple of things here, watch the values in the variables list and watch the plate thickness. As soon as I hit modify, everything updates to now match. The plate got smaller, the variables list updated. So we're building this component now that's going to adapt to different member sizes. And this could be done for all kinds of things, the size and shape of other pieces, uh, the configuration of bolt groups, um, all kinds of good stuff. Now when you're looking at the formulas and the types of formulas you want to build, something that's going to be really, really helpful for you is if you go to the Tecla User Assistance website, teclastructures.support.tecla.com, and I want you to do a search for this functions and variable formulas. This is going to be really, really handy when you're building custom components. Um, if you scroll down through here, you can see that there are different mathematical functions. There are reference functions, which is what we did there to um, grab the uh, flange thickness. Um, it's kind of giving you the code and what it all means. 
Um, we can do trig functions in here. So if you're doing some type of bracing, you're making more something more creative than a beam to beam connection. Uh, that's very helpful. Uh, there are data type conversions, which uh, are important when we're working in an imperial environment, especially because Tecla is thinking in metric under the hood. So this is a really great reference. Um, I, I definitely recommend searching this out and even go ahead and bookmarking this um, with whatever browser you happen to be using, because this will uh, come into play quite a bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you one more thing. Um, I'm going to try to break these videos up so that they're not too long because if I, I could talk about formulas for the next two hours. Um, so we're going to try to break these up into different groups. Um, but let's say that we wanted to control the bolt gauge based on the gauge of the beam. Now, gauge of a beam is not something that's inherently part of the member. Like it's not part of the regular properties. Uh, if I inquire on it, um, it may be shown here. Let's see, going through. Yep, it doesn't seem to be listed. It's not part of the properties in here. Um, so we need to get whatever the current bolt gauge is. And what I'm going to be showing you is part of the US Imperial environment. Not all environments may have this information listed, but we've gone ahead and added it here for you. Um, we want to pull in the bolt gauge, and we do have those written to the members in the profile catalog. Um, if you go to your profile catalog and take a look at a member, really any, any wide flange member, let's say I just want to grab the same size beam here, uh, you can go to this user attributes, and here we've got things like the workable gauge and we have decimal web thicknesses. So these are values that you can reference in different places in Tecla structures, whether it's in drawings, marks, or as we're talking about right now, custom components. Now, workable gauge has a specific uh, name, a specific code, if you will, that you need to call in. And you can see what that is by coming down here to your definitions. If you click on definitions, Here's where it lists out the different properties for members. Uh, here we've got I profiles. So I profiles and workable gauge, the code that I need is gauge underscore distance underscore I. So that's the value I need to look for in my custom component editor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that because I'm lazy and I don't like to type. And then I'm gonna cancel out of this profile uh, property, cancel out of the profile dialog box. No, I don't wanna make any changes. And now I'm going to go ahead and try and get the property of the beam into the variables list here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new variable. And um, just as a place for safekeeping, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that gauge distance i, but that's not gonna work right away. It doesn't understand just gauge distance i. Gauge distance i of what, right? So we need to have a similar call off like this value here. Now there is going to be something a little bit different about this. Going back to reference these functions, and this is a reference function, um, we have different user-defined attributes, we have parameters, um, we have other properties, and then we have this FTPL. So that's going to be a template attribute, which is what I want to use here. Uh, we can actually, you know, kind of try to copy paste from here. Um, what I like to do though is, is you know, kind of follow the same steps I did for this guy. Even if I'm not grabbing the actual property uh, directly from the browser, I will copy something random so that I can build out the basic text, including the GUID that I need. Um, so I'm gonna grab something like height, copy that reference, and then I'm gonna come in here and paste this in. Now, once this is in, we need to edit the text here, I don't want to change the GUID, I still need that. So I'm going to take my gauge distance I and I'm going to replace height here. So uh, I'm going to paste this in here. I need to indicate that this is a profile property. So I'm going to put in caps profile dot gauge distance I and I'm going to change this to be FTPL. And again, this all is case sensitive, so you wanna be careful when you're typing these values in. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add quotes around this value. It's a little bit different because I'm calling in 
um, something that's not inherently part of the property like flange thickness. Um, so then once I go ahead and hit enter, you can see how now it's giving me a three and a half inch value because it's reading from the profile catalog. It's finding the template attribute called gauge distance I based on the GUID of the beam. So now that I've done that, I can again push that value to the properties of that bolt group. So if I go up here to my bolt group, expand this out, the gauge is going to be my distance uh, Y. So I'm going to come in here, say I want to, I'm right clicking on it, I want to add an equation. I could also again just click in here and just uh, add an equal sign. Um, and I want this to equal P3. So now let's give this a test. Again, I'm going to go ahead and change my beam size from a 1640. Let's see, a 1640 has got a three and a half inch gauge. Let's say we wanted to go with a 1657, still a three and a half inch gauge. There we go. So a 1677 has a five and a half inch gauge. So let's try and modify this. Again, kind of watching the plate over here and watching the, the pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and hit modify. And hopefully you can see that that beam or the uh, bolt group spread apart. Now there's other things happening here that I'm going to have to address for a beam size change that is that different. Um, but if I undo and redo, you can see that bolt group spread apart. Now I would also have to tell the plate to get larger based on the new bolt dimensions. I'm going to have to tell that cope cut to get larger because obviously it's not big enough. Um, but those are the types of things that you can handle as you test here in the custom component editor. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, hopefully this gives you at least um, some basics that you can start to try some things on your own. Um, I'm going to try to keep creating videos on different types of formulas. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the formula types. This is just, you know, I'm trying to keep these as little digestible videos. Um, as always, leave comments below or questions below um, if you have any. And uh, thank you for watching.